So, welcome back to the podcast, Liam Kernahan. Liam, how are you, mate? Are you well? I'm very well, thank you, mate. As I said to you just before, it's about 23 degrees outside, so loving this summer weather. May it continue even more. <sighs> I, I, I see at the point of recording this, sun splitting the stones where you are, but with <laughs> me, there's weather warnings, there's floods. My electricity was off for the past two hours. It's chaos here. But there you go. The weather report. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I need to chat to you about your exciting new appointment with the RNZ PBA. Uh, but before we get into that, first of all, how's the season been going so far? Because you guys have been dead busy already. Yeah. So, so for your listeners who may not be a sort of aware of how the, the season down under works, we sort of kick off about late October, early November. Mm. Um, and we sort of have a series of minor competitions up until about midway through December. And that's, that's sort of our first major championship. Well, sort of de facto major championship. We don't have them in the rules, but, but it's kind of the one where a lot of the grade one and two bands go to. So it's sort of major yeah. for us. That's in, that's in a small town um, just outside of Wellington called Palmerston North. And it's, and it's, Square Day, colloquially known as Square Day. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that's kind of your first opportunity to hear the major grade one and in, in, in two bands. Um, and we're pretty lucky that we had uh, Manawatu, we had Auckland District, and we had City of Invercargill right from the bottom of the South Island. And obviously yeah. Manawatu and A&D had just been um, at the Worlds in August. So it was a real delight to hear that. A bit of a break over the Christmas period to spend time with loved ones and get some time at the beach and then right back into it basically from now this weekend actually flying down to again a small a small little town actually outside of Palmerston North called Turakina. Um the high the oldest Highland Games in New Zealand. Um and that's kind of I guess the first pipe band contest of the year. So from now right into the nationals in mid-March, mm-hmm. we're we're all go. So it's great. I mean one of the really cool things for us this season is we're seeing a real growth in the number of juvenile pipe bands throughout New Zealand. You know, we've got 11 or 12 entered for the nationals, which is a record for New Zealand. And I would suspect, you know, not that I'm a, a betting man, but I think if you look around the world, it'll probably be the biggest juvenile contest in the world, you know, even when there you consider, you yeah. even when you can the worlds, you know? Um, mm-hmm. So we're really excited about that. But even at some of these local contests, you're seeing youth bands emerge where you haven't seen them coming from before. You know, you're, you're seeing a whole bunch of development in some of those bigger, bigger youth pipe bands. So you're sort of getting a second or even a third band coming through. So for mm. us, that's really exciting because, you know, New Zealand, I think I've said to you before on, on your show, it's not necessarily culturally ingrained in us piping and drumming. So to see that level of young people coming through is awesome for the scene and awesome for the movement. It really is fantastic at the moment. And I'm so glad you mentioned about the juvenile scene because uh, ourselves in the Rab Show, you know, we've been streaming the Young Piper of the Year competition each year now yeah. for the past while. The amount of young talent that's coming through at the moment, Liam, it's incredible. Uh, what's the secret there? But where is this all coming from? <laughs> Yeah, look, and, and and if there was a magic recipe, Rab, I'm sure we'd be selling it to the world. But I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I I I think it really is one of those things that if 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 you don't put in the effort with your local band and your local community, you're never going to get that return. So we're seeing a lot of bands throughout the country heavily investing in reaching out to schools and their communities. You know, we've obviously mm. got some pretty big teaching programs like St Andrews College in Christchurch. Yeah. You know, you've got the Invercargill Licensing Trust down in Invercargill that um, Ellie McKenzie runs. You know, you've got a whole other bunch of schools throughout the country. But places like Hamilton, for instance, they've invested pretty heavily in a teaching yeah. program that Brendan Ede and Meliana Ede run. And so I, I I just think, honestly, it's 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 the old ethos of putting in a lot of hard work and reaping the rewards. Um, yeah. and, and then I think we, we are also quite lucky that New Zealand has a lot of top flight solo pipers, particularly that go to Scotland and bring back a lot of that knowledge and a lot of that expertise. And, yeah. you know, we held the RNZ PBA annual summer school, which is kind of our first kickoff event for the year. A couple of weeks ago in Christchurch, we had 150 people attend the school. Wow. Um, and a lot of that is driven by, you know, kids obviously wanting to get back into it, but also the opportunity to come and learn um, from, from, from some of our best. And, and the thing that really excited me, not just the fact we had 150 people there, but, you know, and I I know most people in the New Zealand pipe bands and you see them around either the solos or in the bands. I didn't recognize half the kids there. You know, it was like a whole new generation of players coming through, which got me really excited because actually we're seeing that growth, as I, as I said, of new players coming through at all levels, which is incredibly encouraging. Yeah, that's fantastic when you don't recognize people. Yeah, absolutely. I know that feeling. 
Yeah. Uh, so I need to ask you then about, about the World Championships. You mentioned it briefly there. There was quite a showing from the Kiwis at the Worlds this year. Uh, how did you think that the Worlds went for New Zealand bands? Well, yeah, look, we're, we're incredibly proud of our bands. You know, we had three in the grade one and one in the juvenile. And I mean, I think before we get onto the contest, you know, just actually mm. getting there is, is a huge rigmarole. You know, we're 12,000 yeah. 12, miles away from, from Scotland. It's the, literally the other side of the world. <laughs> and the, the the expense, I mean, it's, you know, we, we've sort of talked in the past about 100, 150. Most bands this time, just because of cost of living crisis, and it's been a few years since yeah. people have traveled that far. We're, we're knocking on the door of about $200,000 per band mm. so new zealand dollars wise you know for the four bands to go we, we, we you're not you're not getting much change from about a million dollars just to do that trip so yeah. before you even get there it's an impressive feat which we're incredibly proud of our guys mm -hmm. and then when you think about <clears throat> you know the bands that went across and they had two weeks over there at most you know re really proud of how our juvenile band particularly st andrews college showed in that juvenile event but our, our three grade one bands really stepped up to the mark you know i think i said to you after the nationals here we we're really proud of the fact that the the the, the, the quality and standard at the nationals stepped up pretty significantly but you know we, we we were really proud of the fact that again our grade one bands took it to the next level in scotland and so um this year might be a bit more quiet on the on, on the new zealand band front in scotland but uh, 2025 looks to be a cracker. We've already got three or four that have sort of said they're probably going to have another go. Oh, um, superb. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so things are looking great. So we were really proud. And actually on, on, on the topic of, of last year, um, those that were following the New Zealand bands in Scotland may have seen a couple of cameras and, and, and film. Yeah. Crews following. That was going to be my next question about these cameras. Yeah. 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 What was going on? Yeah, so so, so look, we, we, we decided um, sort of early 2020, what are we now, 2024, 2023, that um, it was a pretty special moment for New Zealand, I think, to have um, three grade one bands and a juvenile band over in Scotland at the same time. And so we took the decision that we wanted to capture this, not just for prosperity um, for the New Zealand pipe band community, mm -hmm. but also to try and tell the story of what we do, why we do it, why we love it. Um, right. not just the broader pipe band world, but also to regular people out in the community who mm -hmm. might be interested. And so hopefully I'm 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 almost ready to absolutely confirm it, but hopefully in the very near future, um, there'll be a documentary coming out based on the four bands that went to Scotland last year. And and we're excited about it because it's kind of um warts and all you know you you see the preparation you see the emotion of it all you see a whole bunch of talented kiwis from a range of different backgrounds being part of something quite special and so we're oh. really fired up about it um obviously as soon as it's ready to go we'll let you know and we'll, and we'll let the community know where you can watch it and things like that oh um, absolutely i'll be tuning in for that yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely and, and i think we, we we haven't really done anything like this here in new zealand i mean we you sort of look around the world and i know simon fraser did a similar documentary i think 2008 2009 mm. yeah there's various bits and pieces but there's never been really one looking at the new zealand pipe band scene and how we take on the world and so for us yeah. it's an incredible opportunity to kind of show hey set to you guys there but you also go. to kind of remember what was quite a special moment for new zealand pipe band history absolutely yeah so i remember actually chatting to one of the camera guys uh he was standing next to me as i was like trying to do my filming thing for rab show and uh oh that chatting away to him for ages and he was asking me all sorts of questions about iron brew <laughs> so yeah, that, that was so cool. Uh, so well, yeah, I mean, I mean what, what, one of the amazing things that we had with the film crew is they 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 don't really know anything about piping. Like the mm. the director had learned pipes, but has been kind of out of it for some time, and and, and the rest of the team knew nothing about it. So it was kind of like. I don't know if you could compare it to like a muggle going into the Harry Potter world. It was just like a complete bizarre, un unusual <laughs> thing for them. But I mean, it was also a lot of their first times in Scotland, right? So they'd never actually been to the UK. So yeah. I am probably one of them, you know, deep fried Mars bars and all, all of the kind of classic things that you mm -hmm. get in Scotland you don't really get in the rest of the world they that were completely mesmerized by so that was the debate actually it's what flavor is iron brew and you just can't describe it can you no it no, just is what it is yeah totally foreign yeah <laughs> that's it so well i have to ask you then obviously nationals coming up now in march and we've been promoting it on rab show now for a little while um 
But we know that our listeners to the show would be definitely tuning in and catching the live stream. Um, but we've been getting a ton of questions asking, will there be any international players featured in this year's nationals? You know, anyone flying in, do you think? Yeah, I mean, there, there always is to some extent um, for, for, for a couple of reasons. And look, I, you know, I, I know this is a pretty controversial topic with, with a lot of people around the world, both, both people who are for it and who, who aren't necessarily for it. And, and I think my view is kind of um, two things. One, actually, what we're seeing now is a lot of international players making New Zealand their, their primary place of choice to play. That's true, so yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they're Australian or even South African, or, you know, we've got a couple of players from sort of North America and and, and even the Mm. UK are saying, I want to make a New Zealand grade one band um, or even not grade one. It could be anything. My band of choice. Uh, We're really excited about that because, you know, for, for a long time, there have been sort of one or two people coming from overseas to make say men or two or Canterbury or, the New Zealand police pipe band, their band of choice. But now we're seeing it a lot more regularly that they're not only playing in New Zealand at the nationals, but they're playing at the worlds with those bands. So yeah, kind of putting that first bit in context, I think that's really exciting for us. And we obviously welcome anyone who wants to make New Zealand their primary place of playing for pipe band. But second thing on, on the other side of it, when we have guest, guest international players coming in, yeah. you know, for us, as I said, we're on the other side of the world, you know, we're, we're, we're 12,000 miles away. It's where our seasons are almost exactly the opposite time. Um, and, and, and all we really have to go off a lot of the time is YouTube, or if we go to Scotland, then hearing the snippets that we do. And while all yeah. of that's great, we're really fortunate to have guest players come in and support and teach a lot of our bands and, and and not forgetting that while they might play in a grade one or grade two pipe band, they're often supporting the grade three, four and juvenile bands that are in that yeah. around. Mm-hmm. So we're never going to say no to that. I mean, from our perspective, if, if we can continue to encourage people to come and give to the New Zealand pipe band scene like that, we, 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 we will do that. Um, mm. But but I also would, you know, I, th- I think there's a bit of a misconception about how many international players, you know, our, our grade one and two bands hold their own. And I think you see, yeah. you saw yeah. in 2021 during the pandemic when the borders were shut and no one could come in. We still had a fully functioning, or well, one of the only fully functioning, potentially the only fully functioning grade one and grade two contests in the world, right? So Absolutely. we're still yeah. on our own. And, and I think with these international guys we have, and, and girls, we have a real co-opportunity to bring their knowledge and expertise in for them to come and teach our up-and-coming bands, but also for them to have a bit of a holiday and see what I think is the greatest country on earth. So There you go. It does no harm. Yeah. So it very much is a two-way street. So it is that like at the world championships specifically, especially during Pipe and Live, I noticed so many Kiwis who were playing in top flight bands, you know, not necessarily from New Zealand. Like they were playing in Bog Hall and Verary. There was tons. So that seems to be common now that the world is becoming smaller, that people are flying now to play. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and look, I, I, I neglected to mention that because that's another really good point. You know, it's not mm. just a one way street for us. You know, we're, we're lucky that a lot of our great players, um, you know, whether they're younger or have been overseas for a while are playing in, in bands, mm. not just in the grade one again, but right, right across, right across the spectrum there. That's it, and yeah. we obviously yeah. stoked with that. You know, we, we, as, as you sort of mentioned, we had two Kiwis playing in, in Volk Hall last year. And we're so sort of obviously mm-hmm. delighted that we've got for the first time, I think, it, it would almost be a decade, I think, or at least potentially longer, you know, two world champions. So there that's amazing for us. But, but again, they they came back to New Zealand. You know, we had Liam Argyle, who was the, the, the played in the tenor corps, teaching yeah. at the summer school. So all oh, of this kind brilliant. of yeah. benefit, you know, we, we, we obviously really encourage players to go overseas and do that. And as you say, we've got players living in Scotland that are, uh, or in Canada, playing with bands as well. But then mm. when they come home, and also international players that, that come over and play, we're always hopeful that they'll share that knowledge and expertise with us so that we can keep getting better there you go it's all about building that scene liam yeah absolutely that's a great focus to have because it definitely seems to be working yeah so can i ask you then about your new appointment there's been quite a lot of buzz about this (laughs) so tell us about your new appointment what have you been put into here <laughs> yeah, well, uh, uh, to be honest I'm, I'm surprised it's been but I, I I've, I've sort of it's been you know we we, we had this election um for, for the board for the RNZ PBA end of last year and sort of got appointed and then it's been Christmas and New Year's and holiday time so they haven't had a huge amount of time but essentially mm. the RNZ PBA sort of works um in in, in, in a two structure sort of two tier system so there's so there's your management group which mm-hmm. is um 
I guess the uh, kind of the, the people that do some of the day-to-day bits and pieces. So I, I was in that for a long time. I was doing the promotions part of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and you've got a whole bunch of other ones. We've got an education group leader. We've we've got a kind of digital group leader. We've got a finance, all, all that kind of stuff. And, and then above that, I guess you've got your governance board, which is three people elected sort of for a two-year term um, each. And, and I guess they take the sort of strategic governance decisions that the association has to take on a range of on a range of issues so you know as I said I've been in the promotions role for two years and absolutely loved what I was doing and you know it was it was quite a hard decision to have a have a crack at going for the board because if you go on the board you kind of got to step back from from that management group um, yeah. position but I just decided look I've I've been super lucky to have a pretty incredible life through pipe bands and through piping and you know I've loved giving back in the role as promotions but I certainly wanted to be able to give back in a whole range of different ways <clears throat> and put my so to speak fingers in a whole bunch of different pies so I I put my hand up um, and it's a very democratic system here in New Zealand. Bands get to vote on who they want on the board. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was lucky enough to come out on top in that. Um, and so it's still a, a, a bit of a surprise because I, I didn't necessarily expect that at all. You know, worked hard to try and get as many people to support me, but certainly certainly didn't expect it. Um, and I just think I'm just a huge, a huge privilege to get the opportunity to do it because not only do I get to kind of still keep helping in that promotional side, but I can get really heavily invested in the education space. You know, I'm really... Yeah. As you can tell, very passionate about making sure we've got the next generation coming through in New Zealand. Um, and then making sure another thing, which I know bands right around the world will be struggling with is, you know, financially, it's really tough for a oh, lot of pipe bands and a lot of absolutely. Yeah. right now. And it, I don't mm-hmm. think it matters what country you're in. And so New Zealand's very similar. And so if I can help you know, by making sure bands have got really good structures in place to be able to get funding and to be able to protect themselves for the future. It's really important because you can have all of these great things. You can have a great education program going. You can have the right promotional materials. You can have bands going really well, but you also need that financial part of it to make sure the band keeps ticking over. You don't want band members paying, I don't know, 500 quid a year to be part of something, you know, because it's an expensive hobby at the best mm-hmm. of times. So yeah. p- p- part of what I want to try and do is, is, is make sure that the bands in New Zealand have got that financial stability going forward. So really exciting time. I've got two years. Of, what am I? I think I'm 26 days in, literally. I started on the 1st <laughs> of, of January, um, but already loving it and already lots of stuff to get my teeth sunk into and, and, and certainly no regrets yet. Oh, fantastic. Well, who knows? We might catch up with you in two years' time and then we'll see if you... <laughs> have any I'll risk let you know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so well i have to say liam that new zealand honestly the scene there is so vibrant at the moment with so many youngsters picking up piping it's almost as if it's the cool thing to do and that that is something that i believe that we struggle with here in the uk and i suppose in the us and around the globe really it's making piping cool for the next mm-hmm. generation and it seems to be something that the rnz pba have definitely cracked for sure, yeah. Yeah, and look, I, 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 again, I don't, I don't think we've got a magic pill or anything like that. <laughs> but, but, but I think you know, when, when, when you think about what young people have today, right? And it's, it's probably similar, no, probably not the same at all as to when I was a kid, right? Um, twenty something mm. years ago, um, <laughs> where it's like, you know. Y- Nowadays, you have so many options and not only those options, you know, um, available at school and there's just way more of them, but they're available online and and kids yeah. want that initial immediate gratification from, mm. from something that they're doing, whether it is sport or it's music or it's a hobby or it's, or it's gaming, you know, whatever yeah. it is, they want immediate kind of gratification. So you do have to battle and you do have to kind of change tech. And I think, you know, we are... I mean, New Zealand is, I think, very different to a lot of places around the world where we're very multicultural. You know, we we have people coming from right around the world to live here, you know, and we've obviously got a particularly big influence from the Pacific Islands and from Asia. And so for us, you know, we we are, while we're not ignoring the incredible history and tradition of where piping and drumming comes from, we are trying to showcase that people aren't just um, old ginger balding Scottish yeah. dude and, and kilts, <laughs> right it's it's it's, yeah. it's not that and for and, and for us in New Zealand you know you sort of look at our youth pipe band and you've got people from big cities from farms uh, who are mm-hmm. New Zealand European or Maori or Pacifica you know you've got 
um, boys and girls, you know, you've got people who are rugby players and football players and hockey players, and they, they come from a whole range of different backgrounds. And I think for us, it's making it look fun. So, it, so it's got to be really enjoyable that they've got to find some fun and interest in it kind of straight off the bat. But yeah. the other thing is as well, they've got to see themselves, I think, in the movement. And, and, I, and I genuinely think if you sort of wandered down the main street of Auckland here in New Zealand and you ask people what their perception of pipe bands are, that, that they would say it was probably mm. old white ginger hair dudes. And so <laughs> we, we, we've got a lot of work to try and change it because honestly yeah. in New Zealand, and your listeners will have seen on the live stream, it's totally not like that you know no, very absolutely. rarely in New Zealand do you see a band that is 100% male or even close to it you know I, I think yeah. one of the things I'm proud of is that women and people from diverse communities come and play in bands right across the country and yeah. so I think that's a big part of it as well so making it fun making ma- making people see themselves essentially in the pipe band movement and then also making it accessible you know New Zealand although not geographically um massive is still pretty difficult to get around and so when you've got players living in pretty disparate communities on say the east coast of north island or right Mm. up north or in the middle of the south island it's often excuse me quite hard to get teaching resources to them they have to travel quite far so being able to support local communities and local bands to have those teaching resources to go out and do the teaching makes it a hell of a lot easier for them to be able to go and do it you know whereas before they might have been nervous or anxious to do it they've got all of that at their fingertips online there you go. Well, if anything, I am going to really compliment you here big time uh, before I let you go. But I believe that the piping scene uh, in the Northern Hemisphere, I guess, we could learn a serious amount from you guys. Uh, because, yeah, I think your scene is so successful because of the amount of hard work you mentioned earlier. Uh, so, yeah, who knows what the future holds for the scene here in the UK, but I think definitely we could take a leaf out of your book. Yeah. Uh, so I need to ask you then, before I let you go, are you looking forward to Nationals? It is just around the corner. Um, it's, it's always kind of a highlight for us, even here in the UK, to tune in. <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, I, I think I'd see this six or seven weeks to go, so it is super exciting, and um, for, for a couple of reasons. One, um, it's it's we've got fifty bands, I think, or just over fifty bands coming, so it's so it's so it's the biggest contest we've had um, mm. in, in New Zealand in some time. I mean, Christchurch was big, but this is even bigger, um, so which yeah. is really exciting. Bands from Australia, obviously, coming, including Hawthorne, who Hawthorne. won the grade two, yeah. who are now up to grade one. So, mm-hmm. be really interesting to see how that goes. But as I said to you, you know, we've got eleven or twelve in the juvenile <clears throat> event, um, and um, which is really exciting, not only just in terms of having that many kids and that many bands in it but it's also just kind of showing the growth across australasia and one innovation that we that i can share with you that we're doing in the juvenile this year because juvenile is a bit different to how it is in the uk it's 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 not necessarily bound by the same rules as um the the graded contests here and so Mm -hmm. the board decided instead of just having the one panel we're going to have both music panels judging the juvenile event so the juvenile is going to have Eight <clears throat> judges, four piping, wow. two ensemble, two drumming. And mm. look, I, I think just it's it's more we're gonna try and see how that goes more than anything. You know, yeah. it's really important to us that that's a really successful event. And and you sort of sit there and go, Well, we see real benefit of being able to have more judges adjudicating if you can make it happen. And so this time we're giving that a crack. Um, hopefully the kids like it, hopefully it works out for the best. Um, and so, that, so that's really exciting as well. Yeah. That's really interesting. You know, it's something we've toyed with on the show here, you know, getting two drumming judges, four piping judges, perhaps, and then two ensemble. We've been talking about this on the show. So it's great to see it's actually happening in reality. That's interesting. Yeah, and, and yeah. we, we it, I mean, look, you think logically um, it, it should work really well, you know, mm, that it yeah. shouldn't be anything that goes too crazy. But I, but I guess it's like it's never, certainly in New Zealand, it's never been done before at a, mm. at a national championship. And so at least in this juvenile space, we'll, we'll see how that works. We'll, we'll give it a trial. I mean, I, I don't think there's any, there's probably no um, momentum to do it across the grades just yet. I think yeah. it's just more of a let's see how this goes. But I think, you know, it's exciting to have because so we've got Richard and Gordon Parks coming out um to oh, as yes. our communicators, which is mm. really exciting for New Zealand. You know, Richard's been out quite a few times. Gordon's been out as well. Yeah. Um, but, but for us, you know, I think it's it's exciting to have for the kids both of those guys judging that juvenile event because they, you know, they're split on different panels. So to have them both there yes. plus all of the New Zealand adjudicators doing it, I think great stuff you know there's 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 no negatives from our perspective 
Oh, fantastic. Well, keep us posted on that experiment. We're definitely yeah. curious there. That would be so cool to keep an eye on. Uh, well, Liam, I don't. Are, are there any plans for any live stream currently? Uh, that yes. We haven't seen any links or anything yet. Uh, yes. Is that out? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, 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 so there will be, so can confirm there will be a live stream. Um, and uh, our amazing hosts, Phil and Libby, again oh, this year. Oh, smashing. Oh, um, brilliant. <laughs> that, that's great. And, and so, and, and a few other special guests, which will be, which will be good. Um, yeah. And so that, that, that'll be out close to the time, but you'll be able to access it through YouTube, Facebook, through our website. It'll be available mm-hmm. everywhere. Um, as, as you remember last year, we kind of stepped it up quite a bit in terms of the presentation. Absolutely. It was great. Exactly the same this year as well. You know, we've made oh, a few great. changes and, and, and a few new things. So, yes, um, live streamers all go. So for all of your listeners that can't make it out to New Zealand, you know, obviously we'd love to have you here. We'd love to have you in Auckland in six or seven weeks' time. If you can't make it happen, um, the live stream is the next best bet for sure. There you go. Oh, fantastic. That'll be me in front of the telly with a big cup of tea. I can't wait. Yeah, fantastic. So, Liam, I have to wish you well in your new appointment. It's dead exciting following the scene there in New Zealand. So please keep up the great work. And uh, yeah, let us know how everything goes at Nationals, eh? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, mate. No, it's going to be an exciting year for for New Zealand. Last year was pretty busy, and I think this year is going to be even busier. So really appreciate you having me on and having a chat about all things down under. No problem. Thanks a million, Liam. We'll catch up, no doubt, in future. Thank you. (laughs) Absolutely.